Hi all, this is Tanishka from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session. Today I am here with the topic that is Azure Firewall Tutorial. So now let us see what we'll be learning today in this session. So firstly, we'll understand what is Azure Firewall and why we use Azure Firewall. Later, we'll look on to some of the key characteristics of Azure Firewall. After that, we'll see what are the rules in Azure Firewalls, what is a firewall manager, and then we'll see what are the firewall pricing. And later, we'll also see how does Azure Firewall work. Once we understand everything, we'll have a quick demo on Azure Firewall. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any updates. Also, if you are interested in Azure certification and training, then do check out to the link given below in the description. So first, let us understand what is an Azure Firewall. According to the definition, Azure Firewall is a cloud-native and intelligent network firewall security service that provides the best-of-breed threat protection for your cloud workloads running in Azure. That means Azure Firewall is a managed cloud-based network security service that protects your Azure virtual network resources. It is fully stateful firewall as a service with built-in high availability and unrestricted cloud scalability. So you can centrally create, enforce, and log application and network connectivity policies across the subscription and virtual networks. This service is fully integrated with Azure Monitor for logging and analytics. Now you must be thinking, why do we need Azure Firewall? Now you must be thinking, do we actually need a firewall in a cloud? So the answer is yes, you do need a firewall when you're using cloud computing. Cloud security does offer you better securities, but it is not sufficient for modern day-to-day -day business needs. If you're constantly accessing the internet for any kind of work, firewall cloud security is much needed. And as we discussed that Azure Firewall is a cloud native security solution for Azure environment, it provides traffic inspection, filtering and monitoring in order to protect from DDoS attacks, basic traffic monitoring, access control lists, or any intrusions. So in short, it is highly recommended to use Azure Firewall. And if you upgrade to Azure Firewall Premium, which we'll discuss in further, this will provide you additional features to your organization with greater cloud security needs. Now we got to know what is Azure and why do we need it. Let us see what are the key characteristics in Azure Firewall. So the key characteristics of Azure Firewall is that it is fully managed cloud-based firewall service, which provides platform as a service as well as firewall as a service. It is built in high availability. That means no additional load balances are required and there is nothing you need to configure. Whereas it is highly scalable because here Azure Firewall can scale up as much as you need to accommodate changing network traffic flows. So you don't need to budget your traffic peaks. It supports FQDN tags. That is nothing but fully qualified domain name to make it easy for you to allow well-known Azure service network traffic through your firewall. For example, say you want to allow Windows update network traffic through your firewall. You can create an application rule and include the Windows update tag. Next is it has inbound and outbound traffic filtering rules. So in inbound, it has DNAT support. That means inbound network traffic to your firewall public address is translated and filtered to private IP addresses on your virtual networks. If you talk about outbound through SNAT support, all outbound virtual network IP addresses are translated to Azure Firewall public IP. Here, you can identify and allow originating from your virtual network to remote internet destinations. And last but not the least, the Azure Firewall is fully integrated with Azure Monitor for logging and analytics, which means all events are integrated with Azure Monitor, allowing you to archive logs to the storage account, stream events to your event hub or send them to log analytics. So these were the key characteristics of Azure Firewall. Now let us see what are the different type of firewall rules. So there are three different rules in Azure Firewall that is NAT rule, network rule and application rule. So we'll understand each one of them accordingly. So let us start with the NAT rule. 
A NAT rule, also known as Network Address Translation Firewall, operates an, on a router to protect a private network. It works by only allowing internet traffic to pass through if a device on the private network requested it. So a NAT rule, also known as Network Address Translation, is the process of mapping an internet protocol address to another by changing the header of the IP packet while in transit via router. This helps to improve security and decrease the number of IP addresses an organization needs. So what does it do basically is that a NAT firewall operates on a router to protect the, uh, these private networks. It works by only allowing internet traffic to pass through a device on the private network requested it. By doing this, it protects the identity of a network and doesn't allow internal IP addresses to the internet. A network rule dictates which network feature can connect or associate in utility network. These rules are imposed at the class level for specific asset groups and asset types. So it is basically responsible to allow or deny inbound, outbound or east-west traffic based on the network layer or the transport layer. So you can use a network rule when you want to filter traffic based on IP addresses or any ports or any protocols. Lastly, we have application rule. Application rules allow or deny inbound and outbound or any east-west traffic based on the application layer. So you can use application rule when you want to filter traffic based on fully qualified domains and HTTP or HTTPS protocols. So these were the three Azure firewall rules which helps you specify which traffic is allowed or denied in your network. Now let us understand how does Azure firewall actually work. Azure firewall offers a feature pro to provide optimized control over in and out network traffic. It eliminates the need of load balancer configuration because of its high availability. Moreover, it allows restrictions on outbound traffic by specifying the FQDN service. You can create your own defined rules using Azure Firewall to filter network, network based on service IP, destination IP, port or any protocol. These rules further show the status as allow or deny status. It also enables threat intelligence feature that can identify malicious IP addresses or irrelevant traffic. Now that we have understood what is firewall and how does it actually work, now let us have a quick demo on Azure Firewall. So before we start, let us know what are we going to do in this particular demo. So first, we'll be creating a resource group, then we'll create the virtual network. And once our virtual network is created, we'll add some virtual machine to it. Once our setup is done, then we'll create a firewall and add some root tables. And lastly, we'll use some rules on the firewall and let's see how does actually the firewall works. So let us quickly move on to our Azure portal. So as I said, we need to first create a resource group. So let's quickly create a resource group. So in this resource group, we'll be creating a new resource group. So let's go to create. And now they ask for our basic uh, details. So as we know, our subscription is there. As we're creating a new resource group, let's give it a name to it. So let's name it Firewall Demo. And now review and create. All right, as you can see, our resource group has been created successfully. Now, in this resource group, we're going to create some virtual networks and we'll try to add some subnets as well. So let's quickly move back to our home page and then we'll select the virtual network. All right, so we'll go to virtual networks. So now we'll create a new virtual network. So let's go create. Now we'll select our resource group that is firewall demo and let's give it a name. Firewall VNet. 
and we will change the regions it is up to you you can choose any of the regions as per your requirement now we'll go to our ip addresses so here we'll change the ip address range so let's quickly change the ip address range now it's 16. all right now we have changed the ip address uh, range now let's quickly add some subnets so let's add a new subnet so we'll give it a name server one subnet and here also we'll provide a specific range all right so we are subnet name and ip address range is done the rest others will leave it as default and let's quickly add so our one subnet is created now let's quickly create one more and let's name it as server 2 subnet and now we'll provide the subnet address range all right so now that we have changed the ip address range and we have created the subnets let's see our security so here we'll keep everything as default we don't have to make any changes over here same as with the tags and now let's quickly review and create all right so our validation is passed now let's create all right as you can see the virtual network deployment is in progress so let's quit wait for it it will take a couple of minutes and then it will get created all right so as you can see our virtual network has been created so we'll just go to resource and let's have an overview on it if you look on to the topology so as you can see we had created a firewall under that we created two subnets that is server one and server two now let's quickly create a virtual machine so let's search virtual machine and now let's quickly create one so we'll select our resource group over here and you can name your virtual machine based on your requirement so let's i will just keep it a simple name as virtual fw demo i hope that looks great and we'll select west us and as i said you can choose as per your requirement the way how much ever you want and now we'll change the image so here we can use our server so i'll be using windows server 2022 and here are subscriptions as you can see there are n different number of subscriptions that are standard so based on your size and based on your requirement you will search your like you can choose your size so i'll just select the best one out of it and now we'll have to create a user name so let's name it as edureka one two three and let's set a password to it all right so it should be it must be between 12 to 123 character long all right so so let's do it accordingly all right now i guess this looks great now here they ask about the public inbound ports so we we'll, won't be allowing it to anyone because like it all whenever it is set in default whenever you're creating a virtual machine as you can see here their inbound port is rdp so as we are creating our own rules and creating our own firewall we won't be accessing we won't be allowing them so let's just make it none and next here i guess everything looks great we don't have to make any changes in networking we will here will be as you can see our virtual network is given and here they have chosen server one so we'll keep it as default and here public ip address they have created one so we'll just keep it none and rest of the looks perfect now let's let's just go next and here also we won't require any changes so we'll just quickly skip these parts and let's 
review and create all right it shows the validation failed required information is missing or failed let's go to basic and let's see what is okay all right so let's okay now let's quickly review and create so here it as it shows the deployment is in progress so once it gets deployed we'll change the ip address of the virtual machine so as in default it is set as dynamic we'll just change it to static so all right as you can see our deployment is complete now let's go to resource so as you can see there is no public ip address and we do have our private ip address so now what do we need to do is go to our networking and here we'll select our network interface that is vmf2 demo and here we'll go to ip configuration and just select your ip config and let's switch it to static so it like while well, we'll be using the firewall it won't the ip address won't be changing dynamically it will stay static means it will remain constant they doesn't have to we won't have to see on uh, a capture new ip addresses every time and let's save it now all right it has been saved successfully now our next step is to create a firewall so let's quickly create a firewall so we'll choose our existing resource group that is firewall demo and let's name it as firewall demo zero one i hope that looks fine and i'll keep the region same as it is so there's no change in the region now let's change the firewall tier and let's make it standard and we'll choose our virtual network that is firewall v net all right okay so it needs uh must have a subnet named as azure firewall subnet so let's quickly move back to our home and let's go to our virtual network that is firewall.vnet and here we go to our subnets and let's go to this and let's just all right so we need to just delete one subnet so we'll just delete this we will delete the second one that is the server 2 and let's create a new subnet named as azure firewall subnet so let's add a subnet azure firewall subnet and let's keep it up. Oh, okay the range is two and just save it i hope that's great all right now let's quickly move back to home and go to our firewalls let's check whether it is done correctly or no so we'll follow the same resource group and we'll give a name firewall one demo best us standard we'll use the same existing and let's see all right fine now the error is gone now here they ask for the public ip address so we'll be creating a new public ip address so let's go add new firewall public ip okay so let's just do okay now we'll go next and we'll just review and create by the time the firewall is being created but we, if we go to our virtual machine, that is VMFW demo. So here we can see it has not been connected to. So as you can see, it hasn't been connected to anyone. If you try to even like open it, it won't be able to open because there's no connection between the firewall and the virtual machine. 
so what you will do is once our firewall gets created we'll add a rule so that our virtual machine is connected so let's see whether our firewall has been created okay so here our virtual firewall has been created so let us go over here now here we'll go to the rules so we'll be adding uh, the first that is the nat rule so let's quickly add one nat rule so let's give it a name nat rule one and what is a rule so what let's give a name to our rule that is rdp rule as we need to allow give the access to that and our protocol would be tcp our source type is ip address itself and our source would be any ip address so let's give it a star so here our destination address would be our firewall public ip address uh, so as we go check in our overview all right so we need to first copy the public ip address so let's quickly go to our firewall and so here you can see the firewall public ip so let's quickly click here and let's see what is our ip so we'll just copy this ip address now we'll go back to our rules and let's add a new rule so nat rule one you can give any uh, name to your rule it's not nothing so specific about it and let's give it a priority so i'll give it up to a thousand and now our rules so as we need to give allow the rdp so let's name it as rdp and we'll be selecting the tcp protocol over here our source type would be ip address itself and our source let's keep it a default for now and our destination address as i said our firewalls public ip address so we'll just paste it over here and our destination port is 3389 and our Translated address is 192.1682.4. And then lastly, it comes the translated port that is same 3389. Now everything is set. Now let's add it. All right. So once it gets updated, then we might get an access to our virtual machine and we will be able to open the virtual machines. So as you can see, our NAT, NAT rule has been created. So let's quickly move on to our remote desktop. And let's paste the IP address. Let's try to connect. So as you can see, they are asking the username and password. So let's give the username all right so as you can see we have entered into the virtual machine so this is our server which is ready and now we will go to our local server let's see our internet explorer and we'll just keep this off and now here we'll open our internet explorer and here we'll try to open any of the web page so let's try to open google.com so as you can see our google.com has been opened successfully if you want you can try any other websites so let's search any other thing like bbc.com let's see whether it opens or no so as you can see our bbc homepage it has opened 
So through net rolling, we were able to access the virtual machine and even browse some of the websites. Now let's do one more thing that is adding the root table. So we'll just quickly minimize this and search for root tables. And now we'll create a root table over here. Now let's quickly give the resource group and the region is West US. Let's name it as root table FW and just go next and just review and create. So as you can see, our root table is in progress. So once the deployment is done, we'll be configuring it. All right, so our deployment is complete. So we shall go to the resource. And now here we'll go to the roots and we'll add some roots. Let's name it as my root root table. And let's, so we won't be adding any, so our prefix would be IP address. So here we'll block the address prefix destination and and our next hope type would be the virtual appliance and our next hope address is the firewall address that is 192.68.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
so this is how firewall works so here we created the resource group then we created the virtual networks and under that we also created the subnets then we also had seen how we create the virtual machines and once our setup was ready we created a firewall and we saw by adding root tables and some of the rules in firewall and and we saw how actually firewall works by adding the root tables and the rules so this is all from my end i hope you like the session and you will also try it from your end too until then happy learning i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning